Hello there, Puck Junk listeners. Just wanted to let you know before you listen to this episode of the podcast that, as I was editing this podcast, the Smith Entertainment Group, who owns the new Utah Hockey Club, made the announcement that their team is going to be called the Utah Hockey Club for the 2024-25 season. This really takes the wind out of our sails because that's what our podcast episode was about about what team name the Smith Entertainment Group might adopt to be the identity of the Utah Hockey franchise. But uh, as it turns out, they're going with Utah Hockey Club for the 24-25 season. Regardless, I still think you'll enjoy this episode. Clemente and I had a great time making fun of some of the team names that are uh, being voted on. Uh, We also talk about a couple other topics, so it's not just about Utah. But overall, I think you'll enjoy this show, even though Utah kind of rained on our episode a little bit by making their announcement at 5.30 on a Thursday night. That's ridiculous, but whatever. All right, enjoy the show. Here it is. This is the Puck Junk Podcast. Hello and welcome to a long overdue episode of the Puck Junk Hockey Podcast. I'm Sal Barry and with me is Clemente Lisi and today we are going to talk about the potential names for the new Utah hockey team that will be starting this fall. We're also going to talk about the purchase of Cap Friendly coincidentally by the Washington Capitals, who are being a little unfriendly about the thing. And uh, we'll talk about a couple of uh, game-dated moments cards that uh, were just released, and they're going to be out long enough for you to to buy them if you're listening to the show and then want to run out and buy them, because usually game-dated moment cards, they come out on a Friday, they're limited to like 1,200 copies, and then they're gone, right? But these are actually going to be out for a bit, so we could talk about those too. Uh, so joining me today is Clemente. Clemente, how have you been? I think we've both been sick. What are the odds? <laughs> no, it's true. We both, um, you know, had a bout with something. Not related, I think. I had I had a minor cold, which is always annoying to get a spring or summer cold. But my voice was gone for two or three days, which is, you know, essential if you're podcasting. So that was the one thing that, you know, we couldn't do. And I think you also had a bout of a throat ailment, right? Yeah, so I had like, um, well, you know, I got I got busy, and then after that, you know, I was I was busy for a little while with stuff, and you know, with deadlines and stuff. You could relate. We both freelance as writers. Uh, Tim's hitting a busy season because he does tax stuff. So there were times where he's like, I just can't record this week or whatever. And you know, like I had like a couple of articles due for like the hockey news, and do like it's homework, but you know, deadlines, right? You know, and. I wrote a, a big piece about, no surprise, Connor Bedard cards and how popular his cards are and especially like his young gun card. But then, yeah, I got sick. And then like on top of that, I've been taking a stand up comedy class. Actually, this is advanced stand up comedy. And it was funny because I was doing the first stand up comedy class in the fall and I did it like right before the fall expo. The comedy just never comes at a good time for me. And then, like, on top of that, then, like, this time it was just, like, I had articles to write. I had jokes to write. I had to test my stand-up. I uh, had a, a the student show yesterday. I'm still getting over this cough, right? At least it's not a sore throat. But, like, yeah, so it's, like, all the shit hits at once, right? It just, it always seems to be that way. And then, like, what gets, what gets pushed aside, unfortunately, it's the podcast. And I hate to say that, but that's just how it is. I mean, you know until PWCC decides to be our sugar daddies and sponsor this show, we're, we're kind of on our own, you know what I mean? Like as far as time and resources. So. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I blame, I think my immune system failing me because I, I was up late often because the Rangers went pretty deep into the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. And I guess I'm just not used to being up that late, like every two days, you know, not to mention non-Ranger games I was watching. I, you know, it's kind of funny because 
you know, I think we kind of like, we look at the athletes on the ice and like, we know what they, the amount of energy and emotion they spend, but fans also spend a lot of time and emotion and well, look, it didn't work out for the Rangers this year, but it's, it was fun. And I think the Stanley Cup playoffs are like an exhausting marathon. And so that, that didn't help me. And then, you know, germs fly and travel. And now I think we're in the post COVID era. So things are kind of back to normal, which means people are going to get sick, you know, and, and that's it. And so it's funny because for such a long time, I'm, we're not used to getting sick. And I made a joke about this not long ago about card shows, building up immunity. I haven't been to a card show in a while. So I have to do that just to bulk up my immunity. And maybe the national will be that boost. The national is my booster. So mm-hmm. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to, you know, we'll talk about that as we get closer to the national, which is not far away. Um, and then we had Memorial Day in between, which we, we were going to skip anyway, probably. So we had a bit of a hi- hiatus here, but I just want people to, to know that we're here. We're not gone. And if people have been reading the website, they know that there's been lots of posts in the last few weeks as well. So we try to give people the content they need. You know, we live in this content driven universe where you constantly have to feed the beast, you know, yeah. and so it never, never really ends, but, uh, but we enjoy it. So that's, that's part of the fun. But when we're not feeling great, it takes a back seat. Yeah. You know, it's funny, like the few times I've interviewed for jobs with places like SB Nation to be like their blog manager for like whatever team site, they'd always say like, yeah, well, we need four to six articles a day and you'd be managing people. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm not writing four to six articles a day, that's fine. Like, I think like if all I did was write, I could probably do one article a day, but would it be great? No, because sometimes you need two or three days to get all your, your story, you know, but yeah, feed the beast. You're absolutely right. But you know what I have been throwing out there are some uh, box break videos on YouTube. Also been posting them to TikTok. And the last one actually did surprisingly well on TikTok, which is funny because TikTok is all about 15 second videos of my baby lip syncing to Michael Jackson songs. I don't have a baby and I wouldn't let him listen to Michael Jackson if I did. But you know what I mean? Like it, it's always just like stupid mindless stuff like that. And, you know, I, I post like a five minute box break video on TikTok and it actually did pretty well, like better than on YouTube. And I'm like, wow, that's surprising because YouTube is like, I'm going to pull up a bowl of chips and watch some videos or I'm going to like have lunch and watch some YouTube. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's kind of like that kind of entertainment. And TikTok is like, I'm sitting on the toilet and I got five minutes to get. We should point out too that, that recently you've been posting some shorts of our podcast. And I think those have been pretty fun and, and we've gotten some feedback from people saying they like those so those are kind of like tiktok like i mean they're youtube short like but they do well on social media I, I assume and they give people a teaser you know if they want to listen to an hour plus that's different but we live in a a, a world of a very low attention spans and so it's it's a, a nice little nugget to give people I, i've enjoyed those yeah and you know like when i first started doing this podcast in 2015 maybe not for the very first episode, but like for a while, I kind of did this thing where at the beginning I would like put clips of like me or Tim or Jim Howard, us saying like funny stuff. Like I'd find something funny from like the middle of the podcast and put that at the beginning. But then that made producing the show longer that other than just like theme music, this is the puck drunk podcast, start the show, right? Like that's easy. And so what's, what's nice about this is I'm like, oh, cool, Tim's going on a 30-second rant. And I would normally, I'd put that at the beginning of the show to, like, entice people to listen to the rest of the show. But the thing is, is that they're going to listen to the show anyways, right? So putting that little funny preview at the front is, like, a nice production tip. But, like, taking it and, like, making it a little video and then people saying, oh, these guys are funny, I want to listen to more of it, right? So, yeah, that has been a good thing. It's funny because I teach students how to do this stuff and yet I don't do it enough myself because I just don't have the time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, go out and produce a podcast, but then it's just like, oh, now I have to do my own podcast and I got a stack of uh, papers to grade or whatever. Never a stack. It's all digital now. A virtual stack. Virtual stack. (laughs) All right. So enough banter, witty banter. I want to talk really quick about these game dated moments cards. Um, They're available on the Upper Deck EPAC website for $5.99 each. The reason why I want to talk about them, they're not the usual NHL game dated moment cards that drop on a Friday are available for a couple of hours and then they sold out. 
these are actual true print on demand cards. So as many that get ordered are as many that will be printed up. So there are um, two cards commemorating the professional women's hockey league final. Uh, one is for of the MVP. The other one is of like a team photo for like Minnesota's championship. And those are actually available until Monday, June 24th by noon um, Pacific time because Upper Deck does everything in Pacific time. And then the other uh, cards coming out or that, that have come out rather are five cards dedicated to the Canadian Hockey League's Memorial Cup championship. And so there's five cards for that. Those are available until Tuesday, June 18th, again at 11.59 a.m. Pacific time. Um, By the way, with the game dated moment cards, one in every 10 pack will also include a silver card. So each pack has one card. You pick the card that you want to buy, you buy that card. But it might have a second card, which is either silver or gold. Every 10 packs also has a silver card. Every 25 packs also has a gold card. One time I did pull, no, actually I think two times I pulled silver versions of the cards. I know that when there was the prior women's hockey league that was at the PHF, I got a silver version of one of the cards. And I was just like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then another time uh, when they had the Connor Bedard game dated moments, team Canada cards, I pulled a silver version of the card. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Right. And it's nice because if you get the silver version, you also get the base version, you know, so it's not like an either or thing. It's like a, a bonus. And I, th- I think that's that's pretty cool. So, yeah, if, if you're interested in that, head on over to UpperDeckEPAC.com. Kalente, have you ever bought any of the game-dated moment cards? I have not, but I like them. You know, I like when I see them in the wild. I usually, if I do buy them, they're going to be through Comp C or, or a little bit later on. And oftentimes, the price will go down dramatically. Right. Because, like, game-dated moments are like the hype of the moment, and then they don't hold value, but they could be a cool card. And so then you can get them later. But look, people have to buy them initially for them to get end up in the wild. Otherwise, they never do. I, I rarely see them at shows. Occasionally, you'll see them at shows in someone's showcase. or But otherwise, you don't really see them. Other than I see them on Comp C. I don't do EPAC. And I should because you and Tim always talk about it. But I think they're cool. And look, Tops does Tops now. So, you know, it makes sense to, to take a moment and, and build on it. And it's great to see, you know, these women's hockey cards. I'm hoping maybe during the Olympics next year the winter Olympics in two years that we'll see some game data moments there. Maybe, maybe it'll be a lot. Maybe the NHL will have a deal with them. To do that. That would be fantastic. That'd be great. They would need to get an IIHF license and they already got the team Canada license. And although I think if they have, maybe if they have an IIHF license, they don't need to get the individual governing bodies like hockey, Sweden, hockey, Finland, whatever. Right. Like now right. everything is so like, Fra- it's fractured. fractured, you know. Yeah. Whereas- but I, but I wonder if the NHL, you know, because the NHL had to make a deal with the IOC and getting these athletes there. I wonder if they will facilitate. That's why I said make a deal with the NHL. I, I, I almost feel like they're the facilitator because they'd be the best, biggest beneficiary of all this. But you're right. If they have to do it within each individual federation, then forget it. It's not going to happen. But if they do it with the IHF or the NHL or some larger overarching body. I mean, the potential there is amazing. And then you'll have like a gold medal winning team card and potentially a set. And you'll have players like, you know, Bedard and other players in their national team gear. It could be really cool. So game data moments is fun for that, I think, for, for the potential of not being married to a particular set. Because sets are, as you know, they're designed in advance. It takes a year, six months in advance. You could produce an Olympic set but have to come out six months later and then nobody really cares. Right. You know, and we would, but nobody else would care. Or maybe like you, we talked about this, but in the past, you know, maybe you'll have the players in their uniform and their NHL uniform with some kind of Olympic flag or Olympic national team flag backdrop. Like they used to do with tops premium, you know, or whatever. So yeah, you know, it's possible. I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunity and that's why I like it. I generally though, just in general speaking, I'm not a big fan of these cards on demand because they just don't 
they don't hold value and they're hard to then sell if you want to sell them and nobody really wants them after the fact it seems yeah and you know it's it's funny that a six dollar card would drop dramatically in price to like a dollar or two right because right? you paid six yeah. bucks for it so you, everybody wants to recoup their money right like right I paid six bucks for this i should get six bucks for it you know what i mean like at least break even or 650 with the tax right it's funny how you, sometimes you can find those for like for cheap but you know building off your olympic idea they got that four nation cup or whatever coming up that yes. tournament and that would yes. be like a good test pilot for that because that's kind of like an nhl thing it is so yeah. even though it's going to have like usa canada finland sweden yeah i think right yeah. four teams but they could they could try that with the game dated moments so it would be on a smaller scale because it's only four teams limited pool of players if that's successful then they could try to do something bigger for the olympics and that would be Nice. I mean, that, yeah. And that would actually, that'd be great for like a print on demand set. Cause you're right. Like you can't produce an Olympic set ahead of time. Cause you don't know who's on the team. You'd have to speculate. Yeah. You have to speculate. Otherwise you wouldn't ever know. Yeah. Right. And um, sometimes they're speculative. I mean, I, I bring this up, but like 93, 94 top series two had team USA inserts and not all the guys in that set actually made the Olympic team, but they were on the national team that would play all season long together. And then like leading up to the Olympics, they'd make cuts and stuff like that. But you know, that's not really how they do things anymore. Cause you know, they're NHL players or even like you look back at like the last Olympics, those teams were thrown together pretty quickly other than the Chinese team where they like brought in expats and like had them play in China for like a couple years to like grow together as a team. Right. But anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about cap friendly. Cause I thought this was, this was interesting. So the Washington capitals bought the website cap friendly, which is most people's go to site to get salary cap information. Of course, there's also Puckpedia, which also has that information. And that's probably going to become people's go to for it because the Capitals, from what I understand, they're buying the site, they're hiring the people that run the site or two of the people that run the site to join their analytics team, and they want the proprietary information from that site because I guess they built like some extra tools that NHL teams were subscribing to. Like us for free, we could go, we could look at the site and we could get what we want from it. Like, oh, this guy's making... $6.75 million and has a no movement clause for the next three years. And then he's a UFA, right? Like we could look into that and get that information, but like teams need like, I guess, more in-depth information, which I'm not going to even pretend to understand part of it. I just don't care. Right. It doesn't affect my life on a day-to-day -day basis. Other, you know, I'm writing an article about this guy. So I need to dig a little deeper, but I guess what it is, is that if the Capitals own this site and other teams are paying money to use this site, these extra features, they can't do that. That's a conflict of interest, right? Like, you know, one team can't pay another team for access to the website, so they just have to close it down, which is unfortunate because it's kind of like how, like, the whole apps and websites and everything is kind of now where it's like something is great until somebody bigger comes along and buys it and then they shut it down. Or I was telling my students, cause I teach a user experience design class. I said, you know, a lot of these apps, they don't really have a business plan. They have a great idea for an app that people enjoy. They don't know how to monetize it. So their plan is, well, I hope that Google buys us, or I hope that Facebook buys us, or I hope that X buys us. You know what I mean? Like you look at like things that like existed and then they were bought by a bigger company and then either rolled in as a feature for that, or they were just shut down because they're like, well, you're too much like us. So we're shutting you down. So that's just kind of the unfortunate thing now is that like a good idea can get just bought by somebody bigger. They snap their fingers and it's it's gone. And that that's not the full story here, but at least that's my take on it with the limited information I've been able to glean over the past day. That wasn't paywalled. Right. No, I, I agree with you. So I, I did not use this site all that much, I have to be honest. And we should point out that this site is not run by the NHL in any way. It's like 
I'm guessing it's two guys who decided to put their brains together or one guy and create a site. And there's so many places like that on the internet that start out that way, like you said, and then go away. And I'm guessing the capitals are buying this thing, not to shut it down, though that's what originally what I thought it, the case was. I think they're buying it because they're basically buying the tools that are being used, kind of like Moneyball. Like if the people who, you know, the movie Moneyball, if the people that, you know, instead of a team coming up with this concept of analytics, let's say it was a third party, they would then hire those people and get rid of them. I just thought it was really funny that the site's called Cap Friendly and the Capitals bought it. I don't know if that's a total coincidence or not. I guess it is. But yeah, it'll be one less tool for journalists and fans. And that's unfortunate. I don't know how much it'll help the Capitals. I don't know what they think they're buying. I can't imagine the information that is being collected is proprietary in any way. Couldn't they just rebuild? I guess it's cheaper than to re instead of rebuilding it to go out and buy somebody else. But the bottom line is that fans and people, users will miss out on this. Now, the site's still up and it may be up through the summer. Who knows? And then once the season starts, it just goes away. I think July 1 is the day that it's going to get taken down. I've heard that. Yeah. So after that, then we'll have to, like you said, go to other sources for this kind of information. But it's interesting. I'm I'm actually interested to see if like over the long term, the capitals somehow improve or get better or, or better in buying and selling players. I have no idea what they think they're getting out of this, but we'll see. Well, I mean, like I said, there's these other like calculation tools and stuff that like teams can subscribe to. So again, like I said, I don't I don't know all all of it here, but you look at like certain sites that are like cornerstones. Like I think of like there was a website called the Goalies Archives. And it was great because they had a picture of every goalie who's ever played on an NHL team. Even if a guy like played like one game, somehow somebody would submit a picture of that guy, like playing the one, like, like they actually had like a picture of like, say like Chicago Blackhawks goalie, Murray Bannerman played 20 minutes of one game for the Vancouver Canucks. That was his first NHL appearance. They had a picture of that which was cool because I downloaded it and I printed it out and I got Bannerman to sign it. They have a resource like that. And then the guy like didn't renew his domain name. And then the site just like went away. You know, that's like one. Another one is like the uh, World Hockey Association Hall of Fame, which was run by this guy who was like a historian of the World Hockey Association. And he passed away. And I reached out to his widow and I said, of course, I'm very sorry about this. I've talked with your husband. He was just such a wealth of knowledge and always very willing to talk about old hockey. And the site didn't get renewed. Somebody else was supposed to take it over. It didn't happen. And then this wealth of information just went away. I'd be like, what would we do if like sports logos went down tomorrow? Or sportslogos.net or hockey DB or hockey reference, right? Like we'd be like, oh no, what did we do before this? Right. So yeah, it's just it's just a bummer. But uh, like I said, uh, Puckpedia also has those statistics. You know that the salary cap information. I was actually kind of annoyed because I went to check it out, and like I'm like, hey, where's that nice little like almost looks like a timeline layout where it's got like all the players, like their names, and like, and I had to scroll all the way to the bottom to get to it, and I'm like, no, that needs to be at the top. When I click on Chicago Blackhawks, I want to see the list of players ordered in like highest salary to lowest salary. And then that little like um, timeline of like how many years left they have and when are they in a UFA or an RFA or whatever. So maybe they'll um, up their game a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. So yeah, cap friendly RIP, but you know, it's interesting. I mean, analytics are a big part of all sports now. And I can, I can see if someone's come up with something that teams are interested in that, just how this marriage came about. I don't know, but, I think it's three guys that created the site or ran the site. For them, they're cashing out and they're also getting it, they're gonna be employed by the capital. So look good for these guys. Like, you know, sometimes what could be a side hustle or a hobby turns into like a full blown job. And so now the NHL has all, all this information. If they were able to put it out, that would be cool too. But they're not gonna do that because it doesn't benefit them or anybody else, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, one look. I'm a journalist and I, I, I like all kinds of open source material and more information is better and more transparency is great. And in this case, I understand that the team wants to purchase this because they see it as, a, as an added benefit to their building a stronger, better hockey club. But, you know, it's a shame that 
something is is out not there anymore, won't be there anymore. Um, but you know what? Innovation is always happening online, and I can see somebody else coming up with some version of this or something else. This is information is proprietary. I'm sure it's information that can be gleaned from a multitude of sources and just put in one place that's presentable. And look, as you know, when you're working on a story, you're looking for any tool possible or as many as you can to be able to put together, you know, information, especially when it comes to data and information, how important that is to sports. But I say good luck, Capitals. See what happens. Yeah. So uh, changing gears, let's talk about the Utah Hockey Club. And now they're throwing names around because I joined their mailing list right away. Like as soon as it was announced, I joined their mailing list. And what I thought was funny was they put a, a poll out on Qualtrics, which is this online surveying website. I don't know if you know this or not, but maybe some of our listeners don't know this. The guy who owns the Jazz and owns the Yetis, or sorry, Yetis. See, already I'm, I'm, putting, the <laughs> na- I'm pu- putting a team name in there that doesn't exist. Owns the Utah Hockey Club. He owned Qualtrics, right? That was oh. that. That was what made his money was this right. this 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 was his thing and he cashed out on that and then and then got into like sports right with with the money that he made selling that so i just thought it was funny when it's like yes this survey is powered by qualtrics and i'm like oh well that's uh that's not a coincidence that that's, he's com- using, that's convenient you know, <laughs> yeah that that's convenient right well you know because he's got a relationship with that but they've kicked around some team names uh we're gonna go through them um, and then we're going to tell you why we hate all of them. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it's too bad that Tim's not here today. Yeah. But I'll say this. They'll pick a name and then they'll give us a chance to go back over them. And Tim, I'm sure will have a take. So this is not going to go away. If anything, one of these names will stick and then it'll be the name that we have to say over and over again forever. So. But, right. Yeah. Right. So well, I'll start with the one that I just don't like. The one that I dislike the most, which is the Venom. Okay, so I get it. Like, so Utah has a lot of bees. Do they? Bees are not, I mean, hornets are maybe venomous. I don't know. Or or wasps. I don't think so. No, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not enough of an entomologist to know there was something flying in my kitchen and I caught it and I didn't know if it was a bee, a hornet or a wasp, but I right. caught it in a jar and got rid, got it out of the house. Right. I wasn't going to be like, Hey, is that a bee or is that a wasp? Right. I was just like, I want that fucking thing out of my house. You know, I, I knew right. enough not to hit it. Cause I'm like, well, right. if this is a hornet, then it's going to come after me. It's going to like, it, yeah. it, it's going to like hunt me down Liam Neeson style because it has a special set of skills, right? It could sting you over and over again. So like if you go old school, like in the seventies, it was a soccer team in Chicago. I think they were called the Stingers. The Sting and a Chicago Sting. Chicago Sting, yes, and I, I remember. And that's, and that's also because it sounds like some gangster thing. But anyway, that's better than Venom. Venom to me, I, I just picture like the bad guy in Spider Man or whatever. And also, what it conjures up to me is like, like your seven year olds playing like rec soccer. Like we need a name. Like oh, Venom is a good name. It sounds like you know poisonous or whatever so it sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with the location it's maybe it does because like you said i don't know the history of bees in utah but i i don't love it i know you don't sounds like you don't love it and it just sounds to me like a name they threw in there to pat out the list that's what it sounds like to me. okay now check this out so yes venom is a famous spider-man villain yes although you wouldn't know that from the movies because of the way marvel sold off all of the Spider-Man IP stuff to Sony and the X-Men stuff, which is why you had all these Avenger movies that didn't have Spider-Man. And then eventually they did because Sony realized, well, we have Spider-Man, but all these Disney Avenger movies are super popular, right? But they still got to keep Venom. So like the Venom movie with Tom Hardy has nothing to do with the like Tobey right. Maguire spider or no, actually, no, there was a Venom in, in, uh, there wasn't a to- in the Tobey Maguire ones. In the Tobey Maguire yeah. ones, yeah. But yeah. that's the thing, though, is that, like, it's still, like, a separate, like, universe, right? So we don't have, yeah. like, Venom fighting Captain America or something, because that's just not going to happen. Also, another thing to add about that. So, yeah. So, one, that's why you can watch Spider-Man movies if you don't 
had Disney Plus because Disney doesn't own the rights to Spider Man. Sony does, which is odd. And then number two, this is why they keep remaking the first one over and over again. <laughs> they can't they can't do anything more with the story. It sounds like, but yeah. And then I think in the cartoons, Venom becomes a good guy. You know, so I don't know. I'm not a big I'm not big into comics, but. You know, I, I anyway. don't know. See, my, my comic knowledge tops out in the 90s when I worked in a yes. comic shop. And right. yeah, Venom became the lethal enforcer because right. he was like such a popular bad guy that they had to make him a good guy in some way. So right. he was kind of like he kind of had like this live and let live thing with Spider-Man. Like you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, but I still <laughs> hate you. But OK, but getting back to hey. the Venom thing, yeah. there's also an energy drink called Venom. There is also an MMA clothing and gear maker called Venom, but it's spelled V-E-N-U-M. And okay. I just don't like the whole MMA thing. Like, I I studied karate, which is very, like, traditional and about, like, honor and tradition and stuff. And MMA is all like, yeah, I broke this guy's finger. and oh, I got bruised. Oh, I'm a tough guy. You know what I mean? Like, I shaved my head. I have tattoos. Oh, right? You know what I mean? And it's just like, it, it's funny, like, being like a, an ex-karate guy, I just look at MMA guys and I'm just like, you know, you're you're just the high school bullies, but now you know how to throw a better punch, basically. Now you know how to, you know, choke somebody, right? Like, so I'm not a I'm not a big MMA person. So I hear Venom and I just I roll my eyes and I just think of like, uh, okay. So I feel like there's just too much other stuff. And I get it. Like it was like with the Golden Knights, like the army wanted to sue them and said, Oh, well, we have a parachute team called the Golden Knights, and it's like Nobody knows that. Right, right. Yeah, we learned that when they had when they sued. We learned that. I didn't know that. The owner of the, the Golden Knights said, look, nobody's coming to a Vegas hockey game Thinking. and going to be disappointed that the parachute team from the Army isn't here. Now, I want to say that the owner is a former military guy, so maybe he knew what he was doing. But anyway, nonetheless, I agree. You sue because of confusion, and there's no confusion with the Golden Knights. With Venom, it could be, but it's also just a lame name. Yeah. And, it's, and like you said, it's it's everywhere. So it doesn't really work for me. But anyway. Okay. So how about the Outlaws? So I'll start here. When I think Outlaws, I think like nearby Nevada. Like I think of like a football team in Nevada or like a college team. It doesn't do it for me. Is there some kind of history of Outlaws in Utah? I guess it's out west. So any state out there, Montana, Oklahoma, the Dakotas. I mean, any of them could use the name outlaw and it would you know, be okay. Colorado. I mean, so I don't know. But to me, it, it doesn't, again, it just sounds like a college football team name or, you know, maybe the thing would have been if they had created logos for each one of these. Now, I know it's expensive and they don't do that, but I just don't, it doesn't do it for me. It just sounds like not a hockey team. Yeah. And I mean, it sounds kind of minor league anyways. Right. Like a minor league baseball and minor league hockey team. So I'm not a fan. When I used to teach at another school in Chicago called Columbia College, this was actually kind of towards my the end of my time teaching at that school. They started a hockey club and the club was called the Renegades. Their logo was like, had like the, like the cowboy hat and had like the scarf up over like the mouth, you know, and yeah. like, kind of like the angry looking eyes. And, and that's, what uh, I, that's, why, that's why I envisioned when I, I heard the name Outlaws, I envisioned something like that. So anyway, so, and, and, and so the, they sought me out to be their faculty advisor because <laughs> okay. all clubs needed a faculty advisor. And I'm like, and I think this was right around the time I started like, learning to play hockey a little bit. Like I started taking adult hockey lessons, you know, you do stuff, you start to know people, you know, and they're like, well, we need a place to practice and we need to play a league to play in and stuff like that. So I was able to help them facilitate some of that stuff, but I was only with them for like one school year. Cause then after that I left the college and I think they went winless. So like my tenure as the faculty advisor of a college club hockey team, I think is like, oh, and eight. Right. Yeah, it was. Like, I call the advisor is almost like the president or the owner, kind of. Kind of. No, they just needed an adult to like. And a signature, you know, and a signature. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, I'm like the faculty advisor now for like the college I'm at now. I'm the faculty advisor for the Pakistani Student Association. Right. And like, 
that's just like totally hands off. Like they're just like, we don't need your help. We just need it. We just need an adult to be right. our faculty advisor. I'm like, Hey, that's fine. And then at the end of the year, I got a free pint class from the college thanking me for being a faculty advisor. And I'm like, all right, well, I didn't do anything. Well, but We should point out that your, your, your heritage is part Pakistani. Right. Right. right which qualified yeah. me. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're it's, not just exactly. like some guy they brought in, like some Canadian guy to coach the Chinese hockey team. Like you're not that guy. Like hey, leave my some... Keenan out of this. <laughs> no, but I want to point out that there are 13 teams in history, in American history, that yep. have used the name Outlaws, including the obviously the the Las Vegas Outlaws of the XFL football team. So this is not like an original name at all. So it's been used before, and and a lot of minor league and college teams have this name or or have had it, like including. The Las Vegas Outlaws were not just an XFL football team, but they were also an arena football league team back in the day. So, like I said, it conjures up Nevada, but it's also been overused. Okay, Mammoth. I'm not a fan of this one. I would like Mammoths plural, but Mm. I don't like singular, like, I don't like singular, like, one Kraken. Like Krakens would be cool, but I'm used to Krakens, so now I don't care, right? I but, will say this. I will say this to interject. There's something called Mammoth Mountain, which would be great if it's in Utah, but it's in California. And I would have been more in favor of like the Wooly Mammoth mm-hmm. with an S on it. Then I think it would have been kind of fun. And also like the visuals for it could be super interesting, but no, it's not. It's just Mammoth. And I don't know what really is something big but i don't know what that really conjures up yeah i mean it's a it's a big furry elephant basically and it's a prehistoric animal so yeah i mean maybe they found fossils out there and yeah exactly i should we should point out that a lot of hockey teams especially newer ones when they like get desperate they'll just go for any ice or or cold reference or animal and that's another I'm kind of like giving you a prelude of the future names that we're going to talk about, but I feel like that's like a crutch. It's like, oh yeah, the the blank, and it's like always like, oh, because it's cold, and I'm, I'm thinking Colorado Avalanche as an example of that. Ah, uh, you know, that's grown on me too. When when that came out, I'm like, it sounds like a soccer team. It's a singular, but it mm. makes sense because it's mountainous, it's cold, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's 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 fine. And you know what? I think like, okay, we can't really do like the whole like naming it after like a native american tribe that's that's over right like I, that that's fine i mean we still have the blackhawks and i know that's controversial so like you know but you're not going to have like the seminoles or the fighting sioux or whatever right like so you can't really use i hate to say use but you can't use people uh, a people or whatever you could use something generic like the cowboys or the firefighters or whatever right like cuz that's like a like a job But, like, I think forces of nature are cool. Like, the more I think about it, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. But, again, the whole singular thing always reminds me of soccer. And, like, I guess it could be a hockey thing if more hockey teams do it. I mean, we got the Avalanche and we got the Kraken. So, and we got a couple of singular ones there. But not a fan of big, furry, prehistoric elephants. Or mammoth, for short. Right. So, okay, speaking of force of nature, how about... Blizzard, which is also a treat you could get from Dairy Queen, which I think is like ice cream with like cookies inside of it. That's right. I, you know, I didn't think of that when you said Blizzard, but all I thought of when I first heard that name was, oh, the avalanche versus the blizzard. Like that would be like two storm fronts meeting or whatever. And I didn't love that. Now, you kind of talked me into the avalanche name. And I like the, the name abs for short. And you're right, it has grown on me. But I don't know. I don't know if I like Blizzard. It just seems... Again, lazy. Okay. But by the way, I think that is, without any knowledge, I think that is a potential finalist. Like, of these six, I I can see that being one that they consider because it does conjure up snow and cold and it's safe and all that stuff. Well, I mean, we got Blizzard, or we got, uh, we could have a Blizzard versus the Hurricanes. Right. We could have the Hurricanes versus the Avalanche. We got some forces of nature. We got the Lightning. Yes. Right. So uh, they ever do a bubble league again where everybody's just playing in the same thing. They should like group the teams that like they should have like all the natural disasters. Where you have like the, the avalanche, the hurricanes, the lightning. 
Uh, we'll throw the wild in there just because, you know, that's it's an animal. Right. Uh, that could be an animal master like when animals attack i don't know yeah. like you know what i mean like uh, you know you could do that and then you could do like the colors like the red wings the black hawks the blue jackets the blues oh speaking of which that annoys me more blues and blue jackets hmm. yeah that annoys me more it's like like in baseball we have the reds and the red Sox. it's like come right. on like right. the reds and the red socks and then we got the blues and the blue jackets right it's just like I mean, the Kansas City Scouts, way back in the 70s, they wanted to be the Kansas City Mohawks. And the Blackhawks said, nah, sounds too close to Blackhawks. Can't be the right. Mohawks and Blackhawks. Right, right. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, Blizzard it could be interesting. Yeah. You know, it could be, at least it's not Venom, Mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> outlaws you know outlaws outlaws sounds like something that be sounds like an 11th grade hockey team name or something you know we're the outlaws you know we're the right, right uh whatever so then we'll go to my favorite name which is the yeti and i think it's just the, my favorite from this list it's not necessarily like i think a winner but out of these six and we still haven't gotten to the generic one i think yetis is like or Yeti. I don't like Yeti singular. I like Yeti plural. All right. So of all these, I think I like Blizzard. I don't like Yeti for one reason. Now we've talked about this before, not about Yeti, but about those big cups everyone's drinking out of Stanley, the Stanley cups. Now yeah. Yeti is also the name of a big cup company. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh no, this is just confusing now. Like if you, if they call it the Yetis, you could have a situation where the Yetis would get to the Stanley Cup Finals. And look, I can see the cross-promotion thing happening potentially. I just think it's confusing. And I, I could see a scenario where the company Yeti that makes those big thermos-like you know, holders, canisters, commuter mugs, whatever. Yeah. I can see them potentially going after them unless they work with them. I just don't – I think people might get confused. Now, Yeti is, is this – it's like a snow creature, right? The mm -hmm. Yeti. You know, it's like the abominable snowman or something. But I don't know. You like this one? Uh, I do, but I'll say this first really quick. I know I talked about, like, the Golden Knights and the Army with their parachute team, and I think that, that was the Army just being a bunch of jerks about it, right? Like, because I think most of the time, you can't really sue anybody unless it's in the same space, right? So, like, if I started a hockey equipment company called warrior that would be a problem because warrior is the name of a hockey equipment company right but if i had a hockey team called the warriors that's something different not to be confused with the movie from the 70s called the warriors or the golden state warriors right like it's a problem when it's in the same space like if i started a thermos company called yetis plural right. or yeah. like big yeti cooler company that could be a problem right because it's it's yeah. in that same space right? right so uh and we i mean i remember this with like i worked for a toy company and then we'd say oh we can't call it this because it's too close to that like we had a we had a we made a toy line called battle warriors and i'm like that's a cool name they were like these remote controlled rock'em sock'em robots on wheels and they'd bash into each other and like the armor pieces would fly off and they had like different frequencies. So you could do like a four way combat if everybody had one and it was, they were fun, right? They were going to be called battle warriors, but then they're like, Oh, well there's a Yu-Gi-Oh character named battle warrior. So we can't make this toy because if we ever get into trading cards based on them, then it might be a problem. And I'm like, no, it won't. So they called it battle wheels instead whatever right like so you always have these stupid like things but i think with like a uh i don't think anybody's gonna be like going to a hockey game and be like damn i didn't get a cooler or i didn't get a giant <laughs> cup that cost 70 dollars <laughs> right see and part of this is my bias there was a hockey team in the 90s they were an ihl minor league team called the quebec rafales and i think rafale is like french for like a gust of wind like a cold gust of wind last time i googled it anyways i think that's what it meant but their logo was this Yeti surfing on a goalie stick. And it's like the most ridiculous 
hockey logo. And I <laughs> own that jersey. Like, I tracked one down, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, it was like a replica, but it was in, like, perfect shape. And I'm like, I must have this jersey. And then, like, I bought a second one that was bigger that would fit over my equipment. So when I would, like, go out and play, like, rat hockey with the guys that have, like, this ridiculous IHL jersey from the 90s with a Yeti snowboarding on a goalie stick. But obviously, they're not going to do anything funny like that because that's a minor league thing. They would probably do like something like the Evansville Iceman that has like a very angry looking, almost like a Wampa from Star Wars, you know, that snow creature that attacked yes. Luke Skywalker. You know, you do yeah. something fearsome. So, you know, we got a mythical creature with the Kraken. What's another mythical creature, right? Like pick your poison, not venom though, but pick your poison. Do you want a mythical creature or do you want a force of nature? Well, so then I would I would amend it to agree with you to make it Yetis, make it plural, because I agree with you. The singularity on names is really weird because you're the Yetis, like not the Yeti. It just would seem weird. And I can right. see people calling it the Yetis if that was the case. You know, it's always like the name that bothered me the most was the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is like right. grammatically incorrect. It's the Maple Leaves. <laughs> you know, yeah. but then you could call it the maple leaf would be one singular that that actually would be grammatically correct. But whatever, I digress. But so names no, you're right. Have, they're not going to be, be be perfect. But like, if we're going to pick a brand new name out of a hat, let's make it good. And so that's so you know. But I can see Blizzard and Yeti kind of being like the top two of the mm -hmm. rest of these because I think we saved the, the the worst for last, which is the next one, right? The last you're one. Utah HC, which totally sounds like uh, uh, I know football teams do FC for football club, but like right, but yeah, like okay, and and you had all the 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 professional women's hockey league. They just went by their city names. They didn't come up with team names yet, and that's okay, you know. But because they wanted to have the time, they wanted to start the league while the iron was hot and while they could do it, and they had the opportunity to do it right, like. So they wanted to start that right away and then come up with the team names later. And that's okay. Right. That's that's fine. Like a lot, you know, like a lot of the NHL team names have changed over the years. Or a lot of times they were based on other teams, you know, like there was like I'm trying to think of an example, but now I think no, that one like that team folded, right? Like I think of like the Oakland Seals were like the San Francisco Seals in the Western Hockey League back in like the 60s. And then when they joined the NHL you know, they were the Seals because they were based on an older team of the same name, right? Or the Ottawa Senators being based on the old Ottawa Senators from like the 19 teens, you know? So a lot of times they change over time or they've had time to develop the team name, you know, like you look at like when, you know, in the, the, the like the mid nineties when we heard, okay, there's going to be a team in Nashville and a team in Columbus and a team in Minnesota. Anyway, so like they had time like, we're going to be a team, and eventually we'll come up with a name, right? We have a few years to do this. Or like the Vegas team, right? They had a few years to, like, figure this out. The Utah team, they're not getting a few years. It's like, hey, you got a team. You need to start next season. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, we thought we, we always thought they were going to go generic for the first year, but it sounds like they're not. I mean, they have this poll out, so they're going to pick a name. I almost wouldn't mind if they went generic for a year, because who cares, right? Like teams change names, teams change locations, right? So if they're the Utah HC for one year, who cares? It doesn't affect anything. If anything, it makes it kind of cooler because that was like their first year in the league, right? So it it, it becomes a little bit of like an interesting historical footnote or outlier or whatever, right? Like no different than like when a team puts like a commemorative patch on their jersey, like Vegas insisted on having those first year first year patches on their jerseys and like yeah we know it's the first your first year in the league because you weren't here last year right like yeah but you know what league. those patches are smart if they ever were able to put them in trading cards so that's another story if they did that absolutely yeah that would be smart oh. but the other thing too is this hot this utah hc is not a placeholder like that would be their name and i think it's terrible because it does harken like you said to the European soccer teams that have FC in their name. And when American soccer teams pick up the FC, I hate it. It's like, just give yourself a name because right. you're not a football club because you weren't started a hundred years ago by some British sailors who happen to be living in your town. Like, and then I don't know of any European team, hockey teams that go with HC. 
So this would be like a generic name that I think would confuse people because the only time I think we've done that in American sports history other than the Women's Hockey League is the Commanders, the former Redskins, went one year without a name because they were trying to figure out a name and became the Commanders. And so I think a lot of people would be like, oh, is this a placeholder? And look, it could always be a placeholder, but my guess is that they want to settle on a name and pick it. And I think Hockey Club or HC is like the, the most generic, boring name ever. I mean, I'd pick one of the other names out of a hat before I would agree to HC. Yeah, I guess I could see it that way. Like, would you would you like the idea of picking a name in such a short time? I mean, look, you have two kids. You had nine months to think of baby names. <laughs> right. This is about the same amount of time, right? Let, less yeah. said. This is like six months. You need a baby name in six months. Go. Yeah, no, it's 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 a good analogy, actually. <laughs> but, you know, even when you pick a baby name. Versus, versus like when you adopt a dog and you're like, well, I got to call it something soon because I can't like just call it. on the it. spot. On yeah, the spot. Right. right. Spot. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because, like, like, when my aunt adopted a dog and he was named Richter and we didn't know if we were going to keep that name, I talked her into it. But I'm like, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. And then he thought its name was Buddy, right? So uh, then it's like, yeah. hey, little friend. And it thinks its name is little friend, right? So you can't. So I was like, no, we'll just keep the name Richter. Cause, but then like, I thought of a better name. I'm like, oh, we should have named him Rumble. That would have been a great name. And she's like, oh yeah, now, that's totally now, is, personality. It doesn't come from Mike Richter, the former Rangers goalie. No, that was his. Th this dog Richter. That was his name at the pound. Spelled the same way as the goalie. R I C H T E R. Yep. Wow. That was that was his name at the pound, and he knew his name. He responded to Richter like he'd look up. Like if you just said. Eh. It wouldn't say Richter, perk up, look at you, wag its tail, you know, and it knew its name. So, yeah, and I like the name because, yeah, I liked the Rangers in the 90s. I liked Mike Richter. I mean, you know, he's right. on the Olympic team, he's on the 94 Rangers team. Happy 30th yeah. anniversary, by the way, to I your know. Rangers. Would have been nice to celebrate that with a cup, but whatever. That would have been nice. Yeah. Well, we can talk nice. about that in, in the future, but uh, exactly. We'll have exactly. to, we'll have to have like a good cry over that because, yeah, I wanted the Rangers to win too, but I also kind of yeah. wanted the Panthers to win, but. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll we'll get into that when when the the, yeah. the finals wrap up. But like, so you don't like the placeholder name. You're just like pick a name, go with it, own it. Right? I get it. Yeah, I'm also not sure that that's a placeholder. I think that that would be their name. HC. I think so. They didn't say that this is a placeholder name. Their name for one year. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. They'd be Utah HC for one year. And right. then they'd have time to develop a logo, develop a color scheme, develop a brand identity, you know, like all the things that you want to do, right? I guess the question is, would they then stray from those other five names? I mean, those are the, these are the finalists. So they're going to pick one of these. I think they're going to go full throttle. Like they, they're not going to do a placeholder. They're just going to go and they're going to pick Venom Watch. And it's going to be like, oh, groans. But you know what? Do locals really care? Because once... The team hits the ice and there's excitement and the logo's really cool. And I feel like all new logos get a bump. I'll give you an example. Like in the 90s, and I'm sure you and I have similar 90s stories, even though we didn't know each other or grew up anywhere near each other. But I became a huge, huge San Jose Sharks fan. And I love the logo. And to this day, I love the logo. And I had a starter jacket. I had a Sharks jersey. That logo to me still stands up. Now, a couple of years ago, I was on Fanatics' website, and I was like, oh, if you buy, like, a certain amount of money, you get free shipping. So I'm like, oh, I'll get my son, like, my son was eight at the time. I'll get him a San Jose Sharks T-shirt, black shirt, big logo in the front, kind of cool. So I give it to him. I go, look, I got you something, Mark, something really cool. And he looks at it. He goes, is that a Pokemon character? Oh. oh. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know what? I can see how somebody in 2000... 20 or 2018 would look at that and go is that like some kind of character from like a, a japanese animation thing and it wasn't it was a very 90s logo but you know it makes sense geographically it makes sense you know there's sharks and off the coast of california the, the the logo is like you know scary and all that and you know and i like it and i feel like these new teams are not taking advantage of that they're they're kind of going milk toast they're going kind of uh you know kind of tepid and I feel like if you're going to go, go in and make it really cool and make people want to buy it, like neutrals, like people like us who are not fans of that team or in that market want to just buy the jersey or buy the T-shirt because 
It's just really cool. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that with the Golden Knights or the Kraken. Like, I didn't run out and buy their gear. I was like, that's nice. It's not for me. And so I wonder if, like, this team has that chance. And maybe it's a different time we're living in. Maybe the 90s were just better. You know, and I feel like the longer I live, the more I believe that. But anyways, <laughs> I don't want to digress. But with the nineties, there were we had a lot of bold colors. Yes. And we had like a lot of like aggressive, like the Sharks logo was pretty aggressive, right? Yeah. And I think of like, okay, I, I thought the Senators logo was okay. It felt very traditional. And right. like the lightning, the original lightning logo was a mess. It just had too much. Like, let's have a lightning bolt. Let's have the state of Florida. Let's have the word lightning in case people don't know it's a lightning bolt, right? <laughs> And right, you look right. at it now, it's just a circle with a lightning bolt. It's so and simple. That's cool. And it's, that's really nice. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes teams need to go through like these awkward like phases. Like I'll give you an example of a team that did it right on the first try. Minnesota Wild. Love that logo. Love that yeah. logo. Yes, I can see that there's a river and a forest and, the, and it looks like the side, you know, like a, a head of like a bear or whatever. I mean, it's cool. It works on multiple levels. I like the color scheme. Uh, not enamored with the name, but whatever, right? I, I think that was a good example. Then you look at like Columbus. Columbus couldn't figure out what the heck they were doing with their logo. Going back in history, the North Stars, believe it or not, in the 60s, they made tweaks to their logo those first few years. In fact, I think that first season, they made like a running change to the logo. Now you would never have that because everything has to be like signed, sealed, and delivered. And this is what our logo looks like against a dark background. And this is what our logo looks like against a white background. And you can because, never put this yeah. against that. And right, like everything is so, and back then it was just a little more like shoot from the hip. Right. And they could make the team, the Yetis, they could make a Yeti logo and then they could change it in a couple of years to make it better. The two things that bump Jersey sales, new team, and New Jersey's, right? When they changed the jersey, they go, oh, I love the new Islanders fish sticks logo. I must have it, right? Or whatever. Not really. But, you know, right. like that draws people, like, you know, because it's something well, different. You, you want to create, like you mentioned, brand awareness. And, and the reason, and what you said is exactly right. Like they have to get it right because there will be no tweaks. Like whatever it is, it will, that's what it will be for a very long time. And so we have to, all have to live with it. And ultimately, in the big scheme of things, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But if it's a it's a cool name and a cool logo, I think everyone benefits, including the league. And so you want it to get for them to get it right. And unfortunately, some of these names, not a majority of them, I think missed the mark. Well, I think that like so many people are excited about this team. You have the people in Utah who are excited, you know, in Salt Lake City, who are excited about getting a hockey team. I mean, it's a big market that doesn't have a pro NHL team. You have people from other states who are like, oh, this is cool. I want to I want to be a fan of this team in year one, even though I don't live in that city, right? Because we could do that now, right? Whereas before we were very tied to our region because you only got Rangers games or you only got Red Wings games and maybe a game of the week, right? Now, sometimes it's easier to be a fan of a team in another city because then you're not subject to the blackouts, right? So you can watch all of the games. It, it's cheaper for me to watch Oilers games than it is for people in Edmonton to watch Oilers games, right? Because I think a lot of the Canadian teams do like a pay-per-view and here it's just like you pay for like ESPN plus and you got all the games, right? So I could see how they'd be like, we're going to have all these fans. We don't want to screw this up. We want to get the colors right with the name, right? The logo, right? But then at the same time, people are going to be excited no matter what. And then they can always change it. I think the important thing is Pick the right name. The logo could change over time. The color schemes could be tweaked over time because, you know, at the end, it, it doesn't, none of this matters. Right. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Like I said before, it's not going to affect how well I sleep at night. If they're called the Yeti or the Yetis or the Venom or the Blizzard, <laughs> the Mammoth, the Outlaws, or the Utah HC. No, but it's fun to talk about and fun to debate. And, and you're right, the timeline is pretty tight, so that name will have to happen soon, by August, the latest, because you have to create jerseys and merchandise, and the season starts in you know, preseason in September, and then the season starts in October. So you need to have this up and running pretty soon. Unless they go with the placeholder, then we can talk about this for a whole other year. How exciting. 
Yeah. Or maybe they do a, a, a change in the middle of the season, right? Or, or, you know, after the all-star break, they change names or something. No, I'm kidding. Anyways, I'm out of stuff to talk about. Any last thoughts before we wrap this one up? No, it's good to be back. It was fun, and I look forward to the next episode. Yeah, well, thanks for listening, everyone, to the Puck Junk Hockey Podcast. And as always, if you've liked the show, please be sure to like and subscribe. Please be sure to tell your friends and family about this great hockey podcast. If you'd like to support this podcast, you could do so by purchasing a t-shirt at shop.puckjunk.com. And if you'd like to read, subscribe to the newsletter at puckjunk.com slash newsletter. And until next time, collect what you like. For more hockey goodness, follow us on Twitter at puckjunk.com.